Hey there, welcome to another radio related video and um, actually a question that was asked from a um, viewer from my uh, radio videos um, kind of gave me an idea of a little explanation that I think is useful for uh, the newbies out there that just don't understand everything about uh, radio and of all the hobbies, um, I think listening to shortwave radio is probably um, one of the complex hobbies that you can have and there's lots and lots of learning that can be done to really enjoy it to the maximum. Um, there are different types of uh, different modes, different types of transmissions that are um, sent over the air. And um, the basic ones that everybody un understands and sees, well, not understands necessarily, but actually knows about, is AM and FM. AM being amplitude modulation on the AM band in North America, uh, or what Europeans call the medium wave band. Um, and there's FM. FM is frequency modulation, and that's in the FM band that everybody listens to for music for example. Uh, these are basically pretty much the two types of transmissions that people know about uh, with their basic names of AM, FM. But on shortwaves, um, when you listen to ham radio operators or some types of utility signals like this weather for example, more than six, nine or thousand. you can see that it says USB here on the top because I can put it in AM it will sound like this. And FM is not a good choice because it sounds like this. So you have a special mode that's called single sideband. Um, a user asked a question about what was USB. And I told him, well, it's upper sideband. And this user just bought a new radio that he's going to receive soon. And um, he said, well, I don't have that on my radio. And um, I realized that I think it needs a little explanation here. Um, upper and lower sideband are basically single sideband modes. So if your radio has SSB written on a button somewhere, then you are able to listen to upper and lower sideband stations. So uh, why do stations use sideband or upper or lower sideband? Well, one of the main reasons why users use single sideband transmissions is first of all because sending signals in amplitude modulation AM or FM requires a lot of power and a single sideband signal will actually use a lot less power because it doesn't have some type of carrier signal with it so when the people stop if you look at this signal for example every time there's a pause when the when the voice doesn't speak there are no transmissions actually so it doesn't cost anything on the transmitter side when you talk that's when the power comes out so because of the nature of this transmission it actually costs a lot less electrical power to send single sideband signals Unfortunately, single sideband signals have no carrier with them, so you need something that creates a carrier. And a radio that has SSB or single sideband actually creates its own internal carrier that is added to the signal. So it's like sending a signal without a carrier, but your own radio will just add that carrier back into the signal so that you can actually listen to it. Um, so, in higher end receivers, 
usually you have what's called upper and lower sideband because signals tend to be sent either from the frequency up or from the frequency down. So an upper sideband signals means that this signal that uses a certain bandwidth is sent from 6604 upwards in the bandwidth. If you use a lower sideband, for example, if I put it in lower sideband, you notice that I don't hear at all. It's very efficient. We could actually have two single sideband signals, one in upper and one in lower on the same frequency, and they wouldn't even interfere with each other. That's the cool thing about single sideband also. So, there's a convention about what is what signals take upper sideband and what signals take lower sideband. And I'll do a second video for the convention of what's in upper and what's in lower and um, in, a, in a second video because I don't want to put too much in one video. This one is plenty enough just trying to understand what single sideband is. So higher hand receivers will have separate upper and lower sideband modes. It's typical of higher end radios. It's easier to tune a single sideband signal when you have separate upper and lower sideband because you don't have to uh, tune around and try to understand how to get the upper and the lower sideband. It gets a little tricky. And an example that I can show you is um, this Degen radio here as single sideband and here it says at the bottom you see one of the buttons says SSB so when I turn that on this doesn't have upper or lower sideband necessarily so what you have to do is fine tune here you've got that fine tune button that's BFO type fine tune which brings you upper and lower sideband so um, that's probably the main problem about um, portable receivers is that if they don't have upper and lower separate sidebands you'll have to tune with what's called a BFO. BFO is a little button that turns like it could be like this one here on the side of the radio it can be a little button that turns on the radio like the ones here um, basically a BFO is a little tuning button that will let you go through a certain amount of frequencies without changing the display. If you're, you have a BFO to tune in your signals, it is harder to tune a single sideband signal because you got to turn it and understand how to get those um, upper and lower sideband signals and it does get a little tricky. but. If you listen a lot to sideband signals, and I mean, you see this ICOM radio here, that's expensive, and I didn't have expensive radios all my life, um, you know, when I started listening to shortwave, I had a 100 buck radio, which was all that I could afford, and it had BFO, and so I had to, you know, fine tune with the BFO and I had that for so many years before I could have afford having a real good radio and um, so it's really a question of taking the time to tune around single sideband signals to understand how it works and a second video that I'm going to do I'm going to give you a little bit of ideas of where to get single sideband signals and actually how to understand when it's time to uh, use upper sideband or lower sideband and by tuning these signals from time to time um, and regularly you'll slowly get the hang of it and especially if you have a uh, BFO to tune and fine tune on your SSB signals uh, this radio is simple if you got a frequency chart and it says well like this weather I just look at the weather frequency and says well it's 6604 USB 
I just type in 6644 USB and I'm already tuned on it. But if I had a BFO, I would put 6604 and start playing with the BFO button until I get something that sounds as close as possible to a natural voice that I understand. And that will be the tricky part in uh, single sideband tuning. So, when you see upper or lower sideband, think that if your radio has what's called SSB or single sideband, you're all set up. You can listen to all of those signals like I'm showing you right here. So, um, hope it's not always easy to explain these things. Hope that it gives you an idea of what I mean. Next up, second video that I'm doing, um, both will be put online together. So um, if you're watching this one, you should see the other one. Um, where to tune single sideband signals and when do we use upper or lower sideband for listening. So uh, that's coming up in our next video. So hey, hope you enjoy these videos. And uh, if you do, you can click the subscribe button at, uh, on the screen and uh, subscribe to our channel. You'll know when, uh, know when new videos are online. Um, I, I post a lot of videos every week, so I think it's a great place to be. Um, and um, there's going to be so many more videos online. So uh, great little channel, I believe, for any uh, serious or even starting, uh, if you're starting shortwave radio, hey, don't be afraid and you can ask questions. If you don't want to ask them public, you can send me a personal message um, because sometimes you know we're shy to ask in front of others, but uh, hey, don't be shy. I was there too, starting listening to shortwave radio and I didn't understand a thing about it. I was there before, so now I'm the expert, maybe not the top expert, but I think I'm pretty good at it. So. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. So thanks for watching, 73.